Hi, this is Jenny Walker, and welcome to Closet Conversations. Today's episode is about the real, real. Now, the company recently announced their earnings for um, the most the first quarter since they went public, I believe, and uh, they beat analyst expectations. Uh, however, because the overall stock market is down, um, their stock went down a few days after that. And is now basically reacting to the overall market because of all the trade uh, fears and things like that. Um, it really has things a little bit, a little bit, you know, not where it used to be. So, um, so that's great news. That's really excellent news. And um, you can go online and search for their quarterly earnings report. I just wanted to lead in with that. So they beat expectations by about three cents and, um, that's really excellent news, and, um, you know, uh, but they've got a long way to go. So, just, you know, uh, the, they reported second quarter revenue of $71.0 million, up 51% year over year, and nearly $0.9 million higher than the average analyst estimate. Uh, consignment and service revenue rose 44% to $60.7 million, while direct revenue jumped 114% to $10.3 million. And gross merchandise volume, which is the total value of products sold through the marketplace, increased 40% to $228.5 million. So that would be the number of um, things in inventory that are for sale. Um, so that's all great, but here's the reality. And... Let me just preface it by saying this. I absolutely love the real real. I understand what they do as someone who owns a consignment shop. I think um, this is a great time for this stock to go public. And I did buy some stock myself. So I'm very, very uh, interested in how they do. And um, but as an avid user of the real real, they've they've got some problems. And I want to talk to you about uh, some of the problems that they have now. As uh, someone who owns a consignment shop, lots of people come in my store and they tell me things <laughs> without me asking. They tell me all kinds of things. People know people know people. So lots of hearsay about things at The Real Real. And uh, since I do not work there, um, I have heard none of this from a firsthand source. But uh, people have told me that uh, the company has changed internally, their focus and things like that. And I'm sure it's due to the fact that they are now a publicly traded company. So their measuring, their measuring stick has changed, right? And as someone, I spent a lifetime in nonprofit. And people were always sweating for the for the board reports, you know, when the board would gather and everybody was bending over backwards, jumping through hoops to get all of their data together to show that they had done something. Because in, in nonprofit world, they have this very unrealistic expectation that you always constantly, every single year, have to do better than the year before. Serve more kids or do more good. You know, everybody's trying to put a measuring uh, stick around it. Um, and in the real, real, you know, there's different ways to measure what they do, and um, numbers, people love numbers, especially in the stock market, so they're being judged on things that um, have numbers around them. So I say all that because, um, you know, I have a, a, a perspective that's not normal because I'm a, a reseller and someone who's been in consignment for decades. So I have knowledge that a regular person consigning doesn't have. So I have different expectations as someone who has consigned with the real real and, um, you know, super disappointed in the amount of money I got. And I purposely tested them out on some stuff. And that is a whole separate podcast right there. I'm getting my $52 check very soon for some Balenciaga. Uh, I sold in something else and, um, $52 in the, in the brand Balenciaga should never be in the same sentence, but it is. And that is uh, something to talk about in another podcast. But, um, one of the key things is I have a, a rabid fan and avid shopper on the platform. And I have uh, bought an embarrassing amount of stuff over the years, uh, the last three years. And the last two shipments I had from them had huge problems. Um, and I'll tell you about them. One was I bought um, a Moschino handbag, beautiful heart-shaped leather bag with a metal handle, and it came packed in a box. It was too small. 
and it had been crushed in delivery. As a matter of fact, the uh, UPS guy handed me a crushed box, and I'm like, oh, man, I know what this is because it's the only thing I've ordered. I'm afraid to open it up, so I took pictures before I opened it up, and it's a good thing I did because this heart-shaped bag that was in a box that was too small had nothing protecting it. Um, it wasn't in any kind of foam or bubbles or anything to protect this thing. And, of course, it got smushed. And one whole side of a heart was flat as a board. And I just was so disappointed. I was just like, are you serious? You know, that you, you can't pack something up and tell it needs to be protected. You can't tell the box is too small. And um, and that's a shame for a number of reasons. One, because I'm a Moschino collector and reseller, and I'd gotten a good price on this bag, and it was super disappointing that it came damaged. But second, um, the carelessness of the people who handled that package, um, they're actually ruining something that's quite quite wonderful and quite precious. And that is, that is a shame. And that kind of carelessness, I believe, is um, starting to take place more and more inside the real real as they expand based on my personal experience so i had this thing happen and i'm like okay great and i've had many things because i bought so many um there have been many i have returned because they were damaged they were absolutely not as described they were um not pristine they were they had so many problems on them now this happens on ebay too so just to be fair but we're talking about the real real so on the heels of this bag that was so poorly packaged and handled um i got i ordered seven things from the real real seven in one order all mosquito uh two suits uh, a pair of pants a sweater a cardigan sweater that matched um a jacket and uh something else and five of the things were damaged out of seven five and I took pictures of everything and I sent it to them and I'm just like, you know, I don't get, I don't understand this. And so one was a plaid um, wool jacket with hearts on, um, heart patches on the elbows. I actually have one in a different size and I was wanting, I like to get a size run. So when I get one jacket I love, I want to get every size possible. So this thing, when I got it, had holes um, in it, the kind of holes that only bugs can make, um, and uh, holes up in all the shoulders and in the side. And in one place it had been repaired, and they repaired it so poorly that uh, they tacked the uh, wool together, but it was you could see it on the inside of the lining where it had been sewn. I mean, this thing was a, a mess. So that was one. Another was this beautiful green suit that's super hard to find, super rare, and um, has this beautiful it's Kelly Green wool suit, double-breasted with a matching skirt that has like a, a road roadway on it or something. And um, the jacket had um, damage in the front places where um, the fabric had been ruined. Uh, these red high-waisted pants, they were ultra high-waisted with boning at, at, in the sides with the bone in the front. And they claimed that it was new with tags in pristine condition. It did have tags on the inside, but it wasn't pristine. I mean, this thing had, was faded. It had uh, stains all on it. And it's because it probably was improperly stored by the owner um, and got faded over time. This stuff is from the 80s. Okay, so you do the math. It's 2019. This is something that could have been produced as early as, um, I think, uh, 19... 83 or 85 and so you're dealing with something this could be 30 years old and so just because there's a tag inside and someone didn't officially wear it doesn't mean it's in pristine shape another thing was a skirt um that had a belt it was like a cotton floral skirt it had a belt and the belt lining was uh made of um faux leather We've all seen belts like that, and it's completely disintegrated. Like I pulled this out of their their bag, and like white white plastic dust like went over everything. This the inside of this belt just literally had disintegrated and was all over everything. Um, so that was not very cool. Uh, the matching cardigan to this sweater that I bought a sweater and then a matching cardigan, really beautiful black and white with a heart on it. But the cardigan sweater had. Uh, a lot of pilling on the front and a snag 
Uh, so that was not, <laughs> that was not cool. Um, so, you know, that's a lot of things that are messed up in one order. And so what's happening is there is so much volume in the push. We go back to numbers. The push is more consigners, more items to consign. And the only way to do that is to get is potentially to get more items that um, aren't in as good a condition as you would like. And it's a real turnoff to have that many things damaged in one order. I've never had it happen before. And I'm just um, super disappointed in that. Now, one of the things I was told, we went back to what I said earlier, from people who've been in my store is someone said um, that the focus inside had changed. And instead of their salespeople being focused on uh, let's say one consigner who has lots and lots of things to consign over and over again, that they were more interested in the quantity of consigners, not the number of pieces from a particular consigner. And so um, I am real sure that has to do with, um, you know, getting getting their numbers up to be able to say, we have X million consigners, or we have you know, X million of this, we've grown this many consigners, right? And um, it's a really interesting focus because your very best consigners are the ones who give over and over again. And to build that relationship with that person who trusts you and is willing to uh, work with you and, you know, be the first one you call when they're, you know, turning out their wardrobe for the next season. I mean, that's really, really important. Not a bunch of untried and new people who may or may not be satisfied with your service. Now, as someone who has, um, who's a big fan <laughs> of the real, real, which I am, I'm such a big fan and I know that they're going to do great. Um, the place that they stand to really, uh, stumble is to not take care of this and put in the quality controls that just aren't there on these clothes. And I do not know who these people are that examine the clothes. I do not know who is responsible because if you've got a quota to meet and you need to bring in X amount of new consigners and X amount of new inventory, you might let something just slip on through that shouldn't. But what's going to happen is that's going to catch up with you later when people continue to be disappointed by the quality of what they've received. I also was told to me again, I'm not inside the company. I do not know, but I was also told that there's a very high return rate for this company. And as someone who has shopped with them regularly for three years, you know, they make returns very easy. But my reason for returning has always been that it was damaged. I can't, uh, maybe, I can't think of any time I returned something uh, just because I didn't like it. I mean, maybe once, once or twice I got something that I just, in, in person, I didn't really care for it. But mostly it's damaged. And, um, you know, there's a fine line in what I've said in earlier podcasts is when the real real says something is moderately anything, moderately this, moderately that it has moderate scratchy, moderate wear that equals severe. And, um, I think that expanding the number of things they take in to include things that aren't as um, pristine as they should be is not a wise move. And so you have to juggle this real balance between getting new inventory and getting quality inventory. Now there is a market for things that are damaged. Um, there's, there's a market for <laughs> designer things in just about any condition. The question is, do you want to be the one to do that? Do you want to be the one to sell that to the public? So I don't know. I'm tempted to do a video. <laughs> I haven't decided yet. Um, I'm tempted to do a YouTube video to show the condition of my seven items um, and the five I'm about to, about to send back and why. And I, I don't know. It's just so uh, unbelievable that um, I feel like, well, perhaps someone should know about it. Now, what to do about it? It's not going to stop me from buying from the real real. It's going to make me read their descriptions even more closely. And be prepared that if something says new with tags, it is not actually unworn and in pristine condition, that it still could be um, damaged, faded, 
uh, you know, and have, have, you know, succumbed to whatever condition it's been stored in for all these years. And that's the reality. I mean, there's a lot of vintage on that site, um, vintage as in not in the last five years, I'm talking from the eighties. Um, you just look up a Jeffrey Bean, you look up Bill Blass, um, there's plenty of vintage pieces on there and people want the vintage. Not all people, I would say most people are not looking for that. Um, I'd say most people are looking for the latest Gucci or the latest Supreme and Louis Vuitton collaboration piece to hold on to, you know, to flip later or something. I don't think most people are looking for vintage, but I am. And so um, other people are too because I miss out on a lot of things I want to buy because someone bought them for me. So the question becomes condition and and what is the threshold at which you allow something in and to be sold? Now, I deal with this in my consignment shop all the time. The biggest issue is condition. And um, the reality is people don't want to invest money in cleaning, repairing, or fixing something that they want to get rid of. It's sort of like throwing good money after bad kind of thing. And so you have to expect that it may not have been stored in the closet freshly dry clean where it's been sitting in a, a plastic bag for a few years or five years or 30 years, especially when you're dealing with the States. So you always have to be mindful of the condition. And uh, <laughs> I mean, I've seen so many things. I've been in people's homes. I've been in the most beautiful homes you've ever seen and walked into a closet where things were just riddled with um, holes from silverfish and malls or whatever else got to it. I've seen things that have been put up and stains have appeared from years of sitting in a closet and beautiful things. It is just a, a crime to, to think that they're so ruined. And that is a reality. And um, there's no correlation between the condition of items and the, and the uh, condition of the home. I mean, bugs and stains and, Things have a way of um, disintegrating or breaking down over time, and everyone is not storing them in some, you know, cold storage unit somewhere. So that's the reality. And so I'm just, a, I feel like I'm a regular and avid consumer on the real, real. And I feel like as much as I can um, kind of give a break to the real real for this because I'm in this industry. Even I am surprised by five things that are damaged out of seven. Now what I've done is I sent pictures to them and, um, and I've done this before. And I said, look, um, I want to return this. I know it's no problem to return it. I said, but I don't want to have to pay the shipping. I don't feel like paying the shipping to send this back to you, nor do I feel like having to have paid the shipping to have it sent to me. Right. Um, I am um, asking for them to waive both of those shipping fees and return them to me um, as a courtesy because I'm dealing with so much that's damaged. Now, for sure, they'll have me ship it back to them for free. Um, the question is whether or not they feel like I should also get the shipping to me to be uh, returned. So we'll see what they say. Again, it's not going to stop me from shopping with them, um, but it really gives me pause and, you know, these are the little things that catch up with you. It's the quality of the garments, the condition of the garments, and who is handling these things and making these decisions that they're okay. You know, they're not paying enough attention. Now, one of the things um, they're not doing is they're not steaming the clothes. This is one of the things I've noticed. You can see their clothes can be wrinkled while they're on display. By the time you get them, they're all wrinkled in the box anyway. So you really have to steam them out to even see what's going on in there. You can miss a lot of things that we do in my store at Walker Fine Luxury Consignment. I have to get the steamer out and steam each piece to see if there's any stains in there. And I can tell you, <laughs> get the wrinkles out and you'll see all kinds of things. So my feeling is that some of this is falling through the cracks because they're not taking the time to process these items um, in a meaningful way. And I say that because I've bought a number of vintage handbags from them that are Moschino and there's literally dust all inside the crevices of the bag. And I'm thinking to myself, how is that possible that no one took a cloth and even wiped it down? 
in the bag that's damaged that I asked to send back. I never did send it back. It's probably too late. It's sitting in a corner in my showroom here. Is um, the handle wasn't even polished like it was brass. Like no one even took two minutes to try to polish it up. So they're not even like in a consignment shop, at least in my consignment shop, we're always working with the items to make them look good. Like we're steaming them if a button's fallen off. And believe me, these buttons fall off all the time it's because the thread has rotted over time, period. That's just the way it is. Tags are falling off because something has happened. We work with a local dry cleaner to sew the tags back on, to sew the buttons back on. We steam things. Um, if it if it's good enough to be dry cleaned, um, we will have it cleaned if it has to be. Uh, we will polish up sterling silver. We will polish up something that's brass. We will wipe down things. We will, you know, clean the bottom of shoes. Like we will do all this stuff to make sure the item looks as good as it can and looks luxurious. And those things are not happening. And you know they're not happening because if you order from them a lot and you see the condition some of this stuff arrives in, you know, you'll know exactly what's going on behind the scenes. And that's the least glamorous part of the job and yet one of the most important. And that's what I got to say about it. Now, I, again, love the Real Real. I own some of their stock. I follow them very closely. I've used them as a consigner. I've, I've shopped with them. And I have very uh, strong opinions about how they're functioning. And I think really having an opinion is important. And I have no problem sharing my opinion because I like to be super objective, but then still show how I feel about things. Because without an honest opinion, um, there's no point to a podcast, is there? <laughs> so there you go. I love the real real, but they've really got to get their their act together behind the scenes and quit taking in these things that aren't good enough, spend more time preparing these products, and then people who receive the goods will be happier and not have to uh, return them. And that return rate, uh, which no one's really talked about that I've seen publicly, um, can decrease. And then we all win. We all win as shoppers, as consigners, and as stockholders. And that's it. This is Jenny Walker with Closet Conversations. If you like what you heard today, please give it a rating. We, five stars is always appreciated. Uh, comments are always welcome. And I look forward to being with you on the next podcast.